What's going on guys? It is incredibly windy. That's why I have the slides in. Don't want to risk any chance that my slide top awnings are going to go flying off. The uh, tire covers are holding up really well considering we have roughly 30 to 40 mile an hour consistent winds out here. So again, incredibly windy. The point of today's video is going to be an interesting one and it's really going to deal with components and a specific component manufacturer that uh, as of late I've been hearing a lot of kind of critical feedback on. So we're going to talk about it here for a second. This is not a sponsored video. As a matter of fact, they didn't ask me to even produce this video. They haven't even contacted me about it. But I do feel it's an important video and this video isn't for them as much as it is for you all, especially those of you who have a product from this manufacturer or that's been manufactured by them or one of the companies that they own. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so you may be asking why I am pointing the camera at the Brookstone. What's the purpose? Well, this video is to talk about a company called Lippert. And I know most of you who have RVs or have had an RV or are planning on getting an RV are probably pretty familiar with this brand, Lippert and LCI, which is Lippert Components Incorporated. Now, Lippert is an incredibly familiar brand in the RV industry because they do something that a lot of other companies don't do. They produce frames, they produce components, not only components, but they also have several other companies that they've purchased and acquired such as Kurt who are also kind of staples in the industry when it comes to towing and other components like that. Now why am I making this video? The main reason why is because there's a lot of folks on YouTube and there's a lot of folks that even in the comment sections on my videos comment on Lippert components and a lot of folks believe that Lippert components may build something a certain way that's not necessarily the way you would want it to be built. So I wanted to take a moment and talk about this because I have not been out to Lippert's factory, but I have spent time at the factories of many manufacturers who build RVs, including Lux, several others. Now, what people might automatically assume is that when they see a structural issue with a frame, that it's automatically a component failure because the manufacturer of that component didn't do something correctly. And I wanna to try to help correct some of that because I have spent time with one of the technicians at Lippert and I've learned a lot about how their products are manufactured. So let me kind of go over my fifth wheel right here and some things that might clarify this a little bit. So the frame that my fifth wheel rides on is a drop frame for fifth wheels from Lippert and Lippert produces the frame for the folks at Coachman. Coachman basically sends them an idea of a floor plan that they want, and Lippert takes that, sends it to their engineers, and determines if they can manufacture that frame where the holes in the frame need to go, where slide out components need to go, where gussets need to go, where things may need to be reinforced and built structurally. And then they basically produce that frame after it's been you know, signed off by their engineering department for production. Once that frame goes to Coachman and it gets on their assembly line, they start building the structure from the ground up on top of that frame. Many of the components, including the windows, possibly you know some of the roofing materials, possibly a lot of the materials used on the inside, a lot of components that you likely have no idea actually come from LCI are also used in the manufacturing of the RV, including possibly your doors on the side, your baggage compartments, you know, your leveling system, lights, all sorts of different things are either manufactured directly by Lippert or they're manufactured by a company that's owned by Lippert. So anyways, it gets back to the manufacturer. I don't care which one it is. It could be Lux, it could be DRV. The frame gets to the manufacturers, they stack up outside and they get pulled in during the production process. So typically in one of the first garage doors that comes in, they start putting axles on it. It could be Lippert axles, it could be Lippert brakes, it could be Lippert this and that being attached to the Lippert frame. Now, here is where Lippert really can't tell or determine what takes place after that point. This is when a manufacturer of an RV starts putting stuff in their RV. Now, an RV frame is gonna have a rating associated to it, and that rating is typically gonna be for axles, for what type of pin box you're gonna put on the front of it, and for the overall gross vehicle weight rating of the RV. Basically, how heavy is that RV gonna be? How long is it gonna be? Where are you gonna put slides? What type of slides are going in it? Where is weight gonna be transferred? Because in reality, all most RV frames consist of are I-beams that are welded together and you know designed to be built upon. But that doesn't mean every RV manufacturer builds their RVs the same or puts the same components on top of that frame. 
with any type of structural component, you need to be aware of where the strengths are, where the weaknesses are, and where you're building up on top of that structure. So I have a drop beam right here. This is a 10 inch I-beam that's mounted below a 12 inch main beam, and then it kind of juts up this way and down and around, typical fifth wheel construction. But if all of a sudden this manufacturer decided to put 3,000 pounds of extra weight towards the back of this fifth wheel, and they didn't offset it with anything, or they didn't let the folks at Lippert know that that's what they were doing when they were building their fifth wheel on top of a Lippert frame, you could experience problems with the frame because the frame is now modified from its original design. The frame is no longer designed to be able to handle the weight in the way the manufacturer of the RV is starting to build on that frame. So I know a lot of folks see things like travel trailers and fifth wheels that have had frame issues. Now there are absolutely going to be manufacturer defects in frames and all sorts of different things. It could be because of a shoddy weld. It could be because lack of quality control. It could be because of a thousand and one different things. But a lot of times there could be a failure simply because the manufacturer of the RV itself, not Lippert, did something on top of that frame that was never specified during the engineering and design work of that frame, which causes it to fail. There are a lot of companies that are putting a lot of weight on top of travel trailer frames, and they're doing it in really awkward ways. And once you get your weight distribution bars attached and you start cranking it down to try to level everything out, you're putting several hundred, if not possibly up to a thousand or more pounds on the A-frame of your travel trailer when it wasn't designed for it. So every manufacturer of an RV has the ability to work with Lippert and design the frame that they want for their application. They could have it overbuilt if they want. I believe a lot of times companies like Lippert get a lot of hate because they build a frame for a manufacturer and then something happens to that frame and all of a sudden everyone comes back to Lippert and says, hey, your frame stinks. You didn't do something right. When a lot of times it's not so much the actual frame manufacturer, it's the manufacturer of the RV that's building on top of that frame that's more to blame than the frame manufacturer. And then to further it, and this is the only time in this video I'm gonna talk a little bit about the consumer, the manufacturer of the frame and the RV on top of the frame do not know how a typical user is gonna use that RV. Do not know what type of roads they're gonna take it down. Do not know if there's gonna be any off-roading involved with that RV by the owner. They don't know if that owner had to make some type of crazy aggressive maneuver to go around an accident and drive the thing halfway into a ditch. Then they pull it out of the ditch and they take off down the road thinking nothing was damaged when in fact they actually overstressed a weld or they cracked something that they just didn't see. They didn't experience it. And maybe a month or two or three or four months down the road or a year down the road, that component finally flexes enough that the metal fatigue causes it to fail and separate. There are so many different variables when it comes to why a frame may fail, what can cause it to fail. And some of it, yes, is the responsibility of Lippert. It could be the responsibility of somebody on that assembly line who just did not assemble it properly. It could be the responsibility of the RV manufacturer who built on top of that frame. It could be the responsibility of the hotshot company who picked the RV up from the manufacturer and drove it 800 to 1500 miles to the RV dealership, you know, and in route, experienced something crazy on the road, had to cut around something, had to go over a big bump, went to stop at their mom's house on the way and went down a farm road that was just washboard and just really, really stressed the frame out. It could be, you know, when they moved it around on a dealership lot. You guys have no idea how many times I see RVs being moved around with forklifts where it's accidentally rubbed against something or it's hit the ground or it's struck a building. That stuff happens. I've seen it at manufacturing plants. I've seen it at dealerships. I've seen it at the distribution areas where they send them to dealerships and I've seen it by owners. And then finally, you just don't know what happens when the owner picks it up and where they take it. Everybody along that line is gonna deny that it was them that caused the problem, every single person. A lot of people don't realize that a weight distribution hitch, for instance, if you set it up too extreme, where it's trying to transfer too much weight, where do you think that pressure is being applied to the frame? 
It's being applied on the A-frame, and oftentimes it's being applied by adding hundreds, if not, again, up to a thousand or more pounds worth of weight on an area that wasn't designed to handle that weight, only to make that travel trailer work with the specific truck that you have because either your truck is sagging too much, or you have a truck with a lift kit, or you've done something to try to counteract it. Maybe you have it loaded up wrong, or you have too much stuff in your truck, and you're trying to counterbalance that weight by using a weight distribution hitch and moving that weight around. When Whenever you own an RV, you have to realize, again, that whole chain of possibilities that come into play when it comes to, you know, all the different hands that are on it, all the different companies that have to start adding stuff to it, and are they staying within the specs of what LCI said they should build on it, or have they modified those specs to accommodate maybe a different type of fridge, maybe a different type of holding tank, maybe a different type of pump, or a generator, or something that, again, that was never engineered into the manufacturing of that frame because the manufacturer of the RV just didn't in form them. And then again, you have all the folks that deal with that RV after it's been built. You know, I've specifically been contacted by consumers who have been very honest with me. One of them is actually not too far from me. He lives pretty close. He told me that he had a fifth wheel. It was a big toy hauler. He took it down a mountain pass road and he went the wrong way. And then he realized way too late that he now has to back this thing up, a relatively narrow road that would give him the ability to turn the rig around. And in the process of doing that, the back tires went off the side of the road and went into this embankment area, and he really tweaked the suspension on his fifth wheel. I'll see if I can dig up the pictures that he sent me in the email. He knew it was his fault. Actually, I think it was a Montana. I don't think it was a toy hauler, but it was a brand new luxury fifth wheel. He took full responsibility of it, and he was asking me if I could direct him to a place who could do that type of work to repair it. And we did find a place, but it wasn't cheap. The insurance kicked in on it. It was certainly something that, had he not known what he had done, might make him believe it was a manufacturing issue. But what you'll see if I can find these pictures is as severe as the damage was, he was still able to tow it home. The difference here is he took responsibility of what he had done and people worked with him. They wanted to make it right for him. But if he presumed that, you know what, I'm just going to say it's Lippert's fault, they built a shoddy frame, they didn't do something right, the manufacturer did this wrong, and he tried to hide the fact that he experienced something extreme, well, who would want to work with that person? Who would want to try to fix it and make it right? Who's going to want to try to help someone who's trying to cover up a problem that they did just because they feel if they complain loud enough, they'll get a company to fix it for them? And I'm not trying to bash on people that do this because, you know, I think most people at some point in their life have thought about doing something like that just because, you know, things are expensive. Things cost a lot of money to repair. And if you can try to get a company who, you know, perceivably has billions of dollars to spend to fix it for you, why try to take the responsibility yourself? And the answer at the end of the day is because it's the right thing to do, right? It may not be the easiest thing to stomach. It may not be the easiest thing to afford, but it's the right thing to do. And because of that, people will try to work with you. So, you know, again, I don't want to downplay anybody who's had a legitimate issue with a product, whether it's LCI, whether it's Moride, whether it's Goodyear, whether it's Dexter, you know, all these companies, Reese, they all make stuff and stuff can always break. Stuff can always have problems from the manufacturing process. It could be under-engineered, shoot, it could be over-engineered and you could still have a problem. But I see a lot of folks who instantly want to go to a component manufacturer instead of possibly looking at all the other scenarios that could have occurred to make the problem that they're having actually happen. Anyways, guys, I know this video isn't going to make me popular. Again, nobody paid me to say this. It's just I've spent enough time around RVs. I've tried to help enough people who have contacted me. I've tried to figure out what manufacturers do and how they do it and why they do it. And I've worked with enough of them to have a really good understanding of the process. And once you understand the process and you know a little bit more about all the different steps, all the different companies, all the different components, and then all the different people who move them around, you have a better understanding of why things fail when they do fail. And oftentimes it can all be linked back to maybe just one event that occurred, which caused it, whether it was from the manufacturer, whether it was from the RV manufacturer, whether it was from the retail dealer that you bought it from, or whether or not you did it yourself unintentionally. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please leave a comment below. Whether you hated this video or loved it, I'd still like to hear from you. And uh, please give me your opinion on what you think about this video. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll be back to talk to you again very soon.